Hello gentle viewers, this is Ab Guardian welcoming you back to Out of the Park Baseball 23 with the Seattle Mariners. <clears throat> A lot happened um, in the previous episode. Specifically, we got ourselves a real good player. Um, say hello to new first baseman Rafael Palmero, who, in easily one of the best trades I've ever made, we got, we traded a mediocre starter for one of the best position players in the major leagues in his prime. That's what I call pretty good. Now, it is worth noting that at this point in baseball history, we're shifting to the new division format, which means our path to the playoffs got slightly easier. I think this actually happened last season, maybe? I'm not actually sure, um, but it did happen uh, that we finished eight games out of first place. Wait, what? I didn't win the wild card, did I? Oh, I see what happened. So that's going to happen beginning of 1994. So the game is just being weird right now. Um, but yes, most definitely. Oh, well, best picture is Chris. So it basically means had we had the 94 playoff system in effect, I would have made the playoffs. I would have been the wild card team. Uh, but however, that is not what happened. Um, so we find ourselves with an interesting situation as we progress forward through baseball. We settled all the arbitration uh, deals. All the coaches we could ever want have been hired. Let us advance rapidamente. In the next few moments. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to offer you 75 grand to get a really good coach. I'm going to do the same thing for Cosgrove. There we go. Okay, bro, no one else is paying you that much money unless they're paying you to be, like, a major league coach. Fans pretty happy across the board. You love to see it. get ourselves a couple of new coaches and then we will advance forwards really mike you're really gonna try to fucking sell me that you got more money i'll give you 30 grand but only because i have to don't be that guy really really fine you can also have 30 grand Uh, who got a gold glove from the Mariners? Dick Schofield did. Well, that's a good thing, I think. <clears throat> You're going to offer me the father of a Super Bowl winning quarterback? How can I say no? Oh, wait a minute. Like this. That's true, by the way. This is the father of Patrick Mahomes, uh, the quarterback of the Kansas City Chiefs. 
Do you really? 40 grand, not a penny more, get fucked. Um, John Valentin won his first Silver Slugger. Excellent. Certainly not his last, if, if you ask me. Did I never get Mike Proley or is, no, I did not. Great, some force to this fucker. Frankly, $5,000 is too much. You should sign for like one penny. Free agency filings, okay. Um, 25 year old starting pitcher. Now, admittedly, he's not actually that great. But I'm sitting on roughly $5 million for a free agent. What do I actually need? Well, I need a first baseman. Okay, done. Um, I have Rafael Palmero now. I could use another starting pitcher. Um... Yeah, it's weird, but I don't feel like there's any real area I desperately need to upgrade. I mean, I could use Jeffrey Hammond to be more productive, but that's just, like, something that needs to happen. Uh, who is the best overall player? Barry Larkin is holy forking shirt balls. That ain't happening. It just is not happening. It would be awesome if it did. But no. Roger Clemens. Tempting, but again, a little bit out of my price range. Let us look for all starting pitchers and see who might be available for a inexpensive amount of money. I could have either Don or Ron Robinson I can't go for Ramon Martinez. He's not a good enough pitcher. I cannot. I mean, my present pitching staff is relatively effective. What does Hanson want? Hanson wants a pretty reasonable contract. I am going to need at least one to two relievers, but I'm also going to just wait and see what happens in the draft. Um, I am picking 22nd, but I should still get a useful player out of the draft. Uh, I mean, does he have to be activated? Okay, fine. Nice. This probably means we're not keeping Rob Dibble. I'm kind of okay with that, though. Now, important note, Rafael Palmero could easily opt out of this deal at the end of the season. I hope he doesn't, but if he does, that deal looks a little bit less good. That trade does, anyway. All right. Uh, Johnny Bench, definitely worthy of the Hall of Fame. 
I'm going to keep going for Larry Durker. I do think he deserves it as well. Dwight Evans, like, I'll vote for him. But I don't think he's got too much of a chance, in all honesty. Um, Richie Hebner, meh. I mean, I'm going to throw one last vote to Gentleman Jim, but it's not going to matter. Reggie Jackson for certain. Jerry Kenny for certain. Gary Maddox is fine, but not a Hall of Famer. I do like Jim McAndrew. This is a draft that doesn't have any obvious, a, a Hall of Fame class doesn't have any obvious megastars, so I've got a feeling Johnny Bench definitely gets in, and probably one or two other of one or two other people that's just been like trapped in the backlog and can't get very much uh, traction. Oh, Burt Blylevin. Um, I don't think he's good enough. I think I have to be a little bit more judicious. Like I think voting in somebody that's a WAR under sixty for a starting pitcher is just going to make the Hall of Fame a little bit worse. So yeah. Yeah, let's wait until the draft. I feel like I feel like there's gonna be better bargains to be had after the draft, and I don't have any real obvious holes other than just getting some good depth. Um, I feel like I'm pretty confident we could theoretically get a, a wild card with this current staff. Why did I get so much more money all of a sudden? Huh? Wait, wait, wait. Why all of a sudden do I have ten million dollars? I don't know, but I will I will take it if the right player is available. Um only starters, please. I am just not remotely convinced that Ramon Martinez is a good investment. I'm just not. Um, I just can't be bothered to sign any of these folks. Like, here's the thing. I would love to see Barry Larkin play for us, and I know that I don't have a snowball's chance of, of affording him. That's the problem, right? You know what? Let's go big or go home. If I can come up with Barry Larkin on top of everything else, that would be a pretty insane offseason. Like, right, like, it takes an actual strength and makes it stronger. That feels almost like cheating. Uh, but I will definitely go for it. I'm not going to pine over Alex Rodriguez. We all know I'm not going to get him. He's going to go first overall to the Marlins. Um, and that's fine. But there might be someone still quite good that makes it to me. Maybe not. Like, we're talking, like, Chad OJ is like, oh my gosh. That might be as good as we can get, which is, you know, yikes. Uh, he's still there. I can get me in on some Chad OJ ground floor. Rick Helling. Mike Matheny. 
I don't hate Mike Matheny as a choice. I do have an older catcher, and having someone I can groom to take over the role isn't the worst idea. Uh, Mark Smith seems cromulent, I guess. Wow, this is like the trio of underwhelming catchers. Brian Johnson, Kelly Snett, and Jorge Fabregas. Russ Davis. Uh, I believe they made the joke that the sign outside the Mariners Stadium, if they ever made a statue, they had to put a hole in his glove because he was that bad defensively. Or was he a giant? No, he was a Mariner. Yeah, he was a famously terrible defensive third baseman. Roberto Pentageni, Kevin Jarvis. This is some serious guy remembering. Jason Jacome. Why do I remember these names? I don't know. Mike Mordecai. Oh, man. That takes me back. That's the Kansas City Royal right there. No, it's never Royal. I swear to God, he always feels like a royal to me, but I remember him being thoroughly unremarkable in every way. Yeah, I'm going to go for Mike Matheny because he does feel a future team need, and to be honest, no one else here really excites me. I will now take Dave Veers because I do want a good reliever, and Dave Veers was that. He was kind of cursed by having to pitch in Colorado, but he's actually like a legitimately pretty good reliever. Especially when I got over to St. Louis. And we're going to jump. And we're already into, like, the drags. Uh, do what you want. Like, Mike Matheny can, in all honesty probably be a starting catcher in like the next year or two but for right now my goal is to let him develop in the minors and see if we can't get him to actually hit above his weight unlike the real Mike Matheny um now here's our issue if literally anybody offers anything to Barry Larkin we're gonna get priced out we just will. I, I can't do anything about that. I could use a reliever in the rule five. Not Eric Gunderson of Gunderson's Nuts. Wow, there's literally nothing of interest here. Yeah. I will elect to take nobody. Oh, that's not true. Yes, it is. Kip Gross. I feel like... Are you the one who pitched for the Pirates? There is a Kip who played for Pittsburgh. Kip Wells? Kip Wells, I think, was a Pirate. And not a very good one. Um, wow, both Moro Gatso and Eric Gunderson drafted. Our, our season is ruined. Really? I didn't even get an offer to counter him. Like, he never even said anything to me. That's kind of lame. Like, it's probably because Milwaukee could afford to give him the contract he wanted right from the start. But that's a real bummer. Hey, let's do plenty of money to make a splash. The problem is there's just nobody worth splashing on right now. Um... A guy like a Scott Fletcher might be handy. So let's talk about what we actually need. I need a reliever. And I probably need one position player. Yep, 
Yeah, I definitely need... Because, actually, I need two relievers and a position play. Because I'm not going to keep Fajardo if I don't have to. Not in the big leagues, anyway. Yeah. Now, I'm going to get a relief from Dave Veers. Uh, Dave Veers, I'm telling you right now, my friend, you're going right to the big leagues. I'm not going to make you spend a single day in the minors. You clearly are good enough to, to be in the bigs. Fajardo's going to hit the IL. So it's going to be two positions open. And one of them has to be a reliever. I could really use a top quality lefty reliever. Don't make me bring back John Franco, please. Surely there's got to be somebody of his talent. Let me ask some fucking Rod Scurry. He's both way cheaper and not John Franco. Which are two of the most important things you have to be. And then I really want to get like a decent hitter. To be a quality backup. That's too much for BJ Serhoff, so I'm not going to do that. I kind of think of Scott Fletcher. Like, in the role I want him to be in, I think he's going to be a pretty solid choice. I mean, would I like someone younger? Yes. But am I likely to get someone better? No. A guy like Bo Jackson would be interesting, but he's basically just cheaper Jose Canseco. And that doesn't really sit well with me. I basically have to play him every day to get the most out of him. I have no intention of playing him every day. Um, Lou Whitaker wouldn't be terrible, but I'm pretty set at second base is the issue. I need a really, really good um, backup. I don't necessarily want somebody who's going to want starting time. I will always love Julio Franco, but not enough to pay him $1 million. I feel like if I'm going to go for the super utility guy, I might as well go for the one who's, like, really, really good, like Scott Fletcher. Then again, he's also quite obviously coming off of an unsustainable performance, and I really just need a good player. I don't need an amazing one. Interesting. Jose Okendo, good plate discipline, good speed. These are all starting caliber guys, though, is my problem. John Castino can literally only play third base. Who is the best hitter that I can get? It's Joey Cora. Then again, Joey Cora can't play the field. And I do need someone who can at least handle it. I don't need another first baseman. Willie Upshaw only plays first. I'm really talking myself into Julio Franco, aren't I? As a nice bat off the bench with good speed. Like, he wouldn't be a great everyday guy. That's kind of what he's asking for is my problem. I think I'm going to do it, though. 
Like, I think I'm going to do it. I'm going to sign Julio Franco. Not for three years. One year. Not in the starting lineup. But I will offer you $2 million. To ride the pine. And what I have vastly, vastly preferred um, a player more like um, Barry Larkin, absolutely. But the point isn't to have. <clears throat> all-stars at every position. The point is to make the most out of your money. Really, Rick Kester made it. And with, like, a pretty sizable lead, I don't know why, but okay, cool. Sure. I think it's weird as fuck that he's in the Hall of Fame and Reggie Jackson isn't, but okay. That's fine. We're gonna go up to spring training. Yeah, but Rogers Hornsey was also a humorless asshole, like in real life, so I'm not. I'm not going to let him tell me who should or shouldn't be in the Hall of Fame. I'm just throwing it out there. Just, uh, just considering it. Do I want to keep Rob Dibble? Is he that good a closer? I don't think so. But maybe. No, I've already got a mediocre left-handed pitcher, but thanks for offering. Super cool. Um, I will let Mike Matheny and Steve Traxel. Oh my gosh, I already had a lefty. I had Graham Lloyd. How dare I? Uh, give me the real scout, yo. Do your thing, my friend. Teehee. Wait, who are you? Be You're benching Jeffrey Hammonds? I'm not okay with that. Like, Alex Cole is an excellent leadoff type, and I want him to fill that role. But why would I keep Alex Cole or Jerry Brown over Jeffrey Hammonds? I wouldn't. That's the correct answer. I wouldn't. Um, do you have a hole in your swing, my guy? No, you're pretty good against both. Yeah, I'm going to overrule you. Oh, uh, you will be playing Jeffrey Hammonds in left field. And not Jerry Brown for now. Like, I guess you don't understand how valuable it is to have just a damn good hitter. And one who's young and actually has a bit of pop in his bat. Unlike, say, Jerry Brown, who doesn't have a lot of pop in his bat. So our path to the playoffs is both a little bit easier and a little bit harder. It's easier in the sense that there's only four teams in our division. And so that means our chances of winning the division are 1 in 25, or 25%. That's good. On the other, other hand, we're still in the same division as the Angels. And as long as the Angels have Barry freaking Bonds, it's going to be awfully difficult to be regularly competitive. 
Mar or Mariano Rivera. What the fuck? Rafael Palmero definitely helps. I'm just gonna tell you, my dude. Inject every steroid known to man. Uh, even some that don't, that aren't real. Like super drugs, just do them all. Flags fly forever, baby. Flags fly forever. All right. So pitching staff. I have eighteen pitchers. I need six less. Uh, Hector Fajardo, more like H Hector Farto. Y you see what I did there? I know you saw it. Uh, Steve, Steve Traxel, I'd like you to go to the minors for now. I really kind of want you to become a starter, if I'm honest with you. So I don't want you relieving unless you have to. Um, Francisco Oliveras can be designated for assignment. Bob Wickman can go to the minors. Still one too many pitchers. That's fine. I'll send down Willie Blair. The Blair Witch Project. I don't need four catchers. Mike Matheny is just better than Tim McIntosh. Like, it's not even close, right? So I'm going to slap you on the opening day roster as the backup catcher. Um, one more player goes to the minors. Or gets traded, or gets traded. I kind of like Ed Sprague Jr. I like having an impact bat off the bench, but I don't have a spot for him right now. So I think I'm going to send him to the monitors, giving us a svelte 25-man roster. The pitching staff as it is is fine. Um, I do want Rod Skirt here primarily as a specialist, though. Uh, let's go ahead and jack up the lineups. Now, I will go ahead and let him create the no DH lineups. I'm happy to see that. Now let's go ahead and add lineups that do have a DH. Uh, go ahead and clear this depth chart, if you please. And do it anyway, if you don't. All right. John Valentin and Rafael Palmero are really close to the same talent level, which is pretty shocking, other than Rafael Palmero's vastly superior home run power. So this is very easily number three and number four. Or number two and number three. Oh, I like that. I like that a lot. Number two and number three it is. That gets Palmero even more at bats. Um, Jeffrey Hammonds, you're going to be the cleanup guy because someone has to do that too. Alex Cole or Jerry Brown? Let's do some comparisons here. So, Jerry Brown is less likely to strike out. Alex Cole is way faster. And Alex Cole is um, 
has a better batting eye. Jerry Brown does strike out less. Defensively, it seems like Jerry Brown has an edge there. So I guess we keep in... Man. I like Cole's better contact, but it's only five points difference. And because Jerry Brown is does have the X factor of being a slightly better defender, I would very much like Jerry Brown to be our leadoff hitter and play left field. All right, who bats fifth in this magnificent lineup? So our biggest issue is we only have one genuine power threat, which is Rafael Palmero, and then a couple of guys who will hit right around 10 to 15 homers. So the question is, who becomes our designated hitter? And I think the answer to that is Jim Eisenreich. I just think Eisenreich is a little bit better hitter. And so having him DH makes a lot of sense. Then we have Paul Molitor batting sixth and playing third. Um, Don Slott is now a terrible catcher. Was he always a terrible catcher? Or is that just compared to Mike Matheny, he's a terrible catcher? Friends, I did not anticipate doing this already. But I think keeping Mike Matheny as our starting catcher makes more sense. Like, he's the better catcher, and he's a slightly better hitter. So let's go ahead and start Mike Matheny. Um, center field will be Marquise Grissom, and Dick Schofield will be our shortstop. Generate me a depth chart, kind sir. I can live with this. Let's go ahead and copy and paste this over to the left-handed lineup, and we'll conclude the off-season portion. Yeah, this is a really interesting lineup. Um, it's very, very top-heavy, and we're still relying an awful lot on Jeffrey Hammonds figuring out everything, basically. If we get the Jeffrey Hammonds that we drafted, we're going to be in really tremendous shape. Like, we're going to be in really good shape. If we get the 1993 Jeffrey Hammonds, I am somewhat concerned. Because uh, what will happen is people just walk Rafael Palmero every at bat. They'll have no reason to pitch to him if Hammonds can't offer some level of protection. So. Let's freaking go. Burp. Wouldn't it have been awesome if we could have come up with Barry Larkin, though? Damn. Mm-mm-mm. That would have been sweet. I would have been pretty jacked up, not gonna lie, to have Mr. Barry Larkin on this team. Oh, well. Can't win them all. I do like the idea of Alex Rodriguez being a Florida Marlin, because if you remember correctly, he's born in Miami. Oh, he's from New York City. I remember the most of his life in New York and uh, Miami, though. Maybe I'm wrong. That's real murderer's row of, like, really high-quality players. And Ishmael Valdez. I'm joking a little bit. Ishmael Valdez was never that great a player. I'm sorry. He just wasn't. He was perfectly cromulent early on in his career, and then he just wasn't. 
Uh, Mike Lieberthal, underrated catcher in my opinion. One of my favorite catchers of my youth. Played for the Phillies. Uh, a really good combo of power and defense. And you didn't often see that in catchers, except for, say, Charles Johnson, who was also pretty spectacular. Darren Dreifert, I remember him signing that gigantic fucking contract with the Dodgers? The Dodgers, yeah, it was like five years, 11 million a year, which at the time was like stupid money. And he was just awful and hurt and bad the whole time. What a good group. John Lieber, another Philly. And a Cub, too, I want to say. And a Pirate. There you go. Some real guy remembering here from players that I watch a lot in our youth. Ah, uh, Garrett Anderson, the man who really tested your opinion of if someone only hit for contact and home runs, how much would he be worth? Because he was a terrible, terrible defensive player. And he struck out. And he just would not draw a walk to save his life could not happen you treated that he had taking a walk like a personal front pretty good hitter though i remember him being an angel for a very long time and uh yeah rusty greer the eternal ranger who was hurt every five minutes for most of his career i remember you rusty you were part of those really good Texas teams with uh, Rafael Palmero and Yvonne Rodriguez. Uh, and Rusty Greer, Juan Gonzalez. Uh, was Jose Canseco on those teams too? No, I don't think he was. Yes, he was, because he's the one who took credit for injecting Rafael Palmero when they were both on the Rangers together. I saw the shit out of those teams, though. Uh, I, was, I really liked them a lot. Good times. Good times. Carl Everett, who didn't believe in dinosaurs, and was just generally, I believe the term is a red ass, but was also a pretty good baseball player. Underrated, I would argue. Uh, quite underrated. Not like amazing, but pretty underrated. And mostly because he got misused in his youth when he could have been a really good contributor. But he's just such a horse's ass that nobody liked him. I remember being utterly convinced Charles Johnson was destined for the Hall of Fame. Uh, God, I do not know why. He was real good on some of those teams. Like, real, real good. But yeah, he was not a Hall of Fame catcher, even a little bit. I was convinced he was, though. If he would have told the avi from the 90s that charles johnson was anything other than the greatest catcher not named sandy alomar jr um he would not have believed you anyway enough reminiscing let's get to the basing ball uh unshockingly nobody wanted francisco Oliveras. Jerry Brown is hurt for a little bit. I'm not going to do anything with his roster spot. I think we're fine for right now. He's only out for two weeks. A virus. Maybe we need to reboot him. The Mark Eichhorn? <gasps> no. What is it? Damn, son. Good job, Traxel. Or is it Trashel? No, it's Trashel. I think Trashel was always a joke. Uh, that people said, like, pff, pff, Trashel. But no, I think his name is actually Traxel. If I'm remembering correctly. Three hundred homers for Rafael Palmero, very nice. And Cal Aldred got a shutout. Wait, Cal Aldred is starting for me now. Oh, he had to start for Nabholtz when he got sick and threw a shutout. 
That's well timed. I like that. Hey, where did Cal Ripken end up? Speaking of Baltimore. The Dodgers, eh? I can dig it. Wait, he's won nine silver sluggers already. Oh my gosh. Just an incredible player. I remember an argument with my dad when I was younger. Because when I watched Kyle Ripken play, he was only ever a third baseman. And... I was like, he can't be a shortstop, he's too big. And he's like, no, he used to be a really good shortstop. Um, then you move over to third base. To accommodate Mike Bordick, I want to say? I think Mike Bordick was the shortstop on those midnight, late 90s Orioles teams anyway. It turns out that you get like more guys that are even about his size. But he's a big dude to play shortstop. Uh, six foot four is pretty big for a shortstop. Now I got that kid that plays for Pittsburgh, uh, O'Neill Cruz. That's like six foot seven, which is just frankly, it's just bonkers to have a guy that big play shortstop. I mean, it'd be crazy for him to play catcher, right? Like you don't want catchers to be like gigantic normally, except fat. Apparently, having fat catchers is fine, uh, but tall catchers, I guess, is is the problem. Um, so how's it going? Um, we're 37 and 15 after two months. Because John Valentin and Jim Eisenreich are playing out of their damn minds, as is Mike Matheny. Even though Jeffrey Hammonds is a dumpster fire. Brother, I don't know what your problem is, but figure it the fuck out. Like, right now, please. You are on the thinnest device right now, my friend. Uh, but yeah, Rafael Palmero has come in as advertised. Turns out, real good at baseball. Who knew? Who knew? I mean, John Valentin hitting 352 is definitely what I what I predicted at the beginning of the season. Like, holy shit. It's amazing. I think it's ironic that the one hitter I really counted on to be the most reliable, Paul Molitor, has arguably been our worst. Like, he is exactly replacement level. No better, no worse. I've got to assume that there's an upgrade coming from both him and Hammonds. Because if there isn't, we're going to have to move on from him. Our pitching staff is... Our starting pitching staff is phenomenal. Especially Eric Hansen. Remember, we were concerned about Eric Hansen. And his ability to bounce back. And oh my word, did he bounce back. But I got a couple of gripes. The first among them is Dave Veers. Dave, I'm going to need you to not walk so many people. 13 innings, fine. But I don't want you to be the backup closer anymore. Uh, I'd rather trust Steve Carse in that role. Uh, Tim Scott is nothing great, but that's not going to really bother me too much. Um... There's definitely some places we could get better. I am deeply concerned with the back half of my rotation. Um, we're winning because we're so good offensively. We're not winning because they're pitching us into a position to win. Um, Atley here can't stop giving up the homers. He loves him some homers. Uh, Chris Nabholtz is all... There's a real uptick in walks. Even from guys like... I Look, I look at his stats. I know Chris Nabholtz is going to walk people. His walk rate has gone up by a, a full walk per nine. And his home run rate has also gone up. 
Are we in the kingdom now? I guess you were always in the kingdom. Interesting. Okay. I guess the park does inflate homers a little bit. I probably need to be a little bit more careful about movement. I wouldn't mind another top flight starting pitcher. I just don't know where we get one and what we'd even trade for one if we could. Um, maybe that's Rick Traxel getting promoted to the big leagues. I mean, top flight is obviously a lot. It's doing a lot of lifting there. I could maybe tread Ed Sprague for a dozen, for a, a starting pitcher, perhaps. I could trade Jerry Brown, potentially. Like, Jerry Brown is quite badly struggling. Whereas Alex Cole has been really good in his limited playing time. For right now, let's just swap out Alex Cole with, uh, with Jerry Brown and see how that changes the lineup. And give me a new depth chart, please. Uh, no, we are not playing Jerry Brown every second game. Or Don Slott every third game, for that matter. So the real question is, if I trade Jerry Brown, can I get a good starting pitcher in return? I don't think so. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, I don't think so. So we're going to hold out until July, and then we're going to see uh, how things look from there. The Dave Martinez. No, I'm happy with my center fielder right now. Gross got a shutout. Nice. Gross got two. Oh, that's Kip Gross, not Kevin Gross. Look, it's K Gross versus K Gross. Ooh, the Royals are about to move into Coffin Stadium. Coffin Stadium is really, really pretty. When I lived in Kansas, I was kind of hoping I'd get a chance to uh, go go see the Royals in person, but I never did. That's not great. Um, I do need a new shortstop now. Isn't Mickey Brantley Michael Brantley's father? I feel like that's the case. I mean, when you can have Alvaro Espinosa, you kind of have to do it, right? I'm not even sure I'm joking. Um, who... Can we get defensively? Eh. I'm not gonna go back to Greg Gagne. Yeah, I think I will grab, I think I will sign Alvaro Espinosa. I'll even give you a major league contract, my guy. I mean, I really don't want Julio Franco playing short every day because he's not very good defensively. That does cause me some consternation. Well, I mean, yeah, you're basically being gift-wrapped a starting position, which you would not have gotten if, without the injury to uh, Fartface McGee there. Dick Schofield. I probably shouldn't call him Fartface McGee. That's on me. Uh, but, you know, I think it's fine. <clears throat> All right. Things are happening. For the most part, like, fine. 
Like, there's not a lot that's terrible. There's not a lot that's great. It's just fine from top to bottom. I do have some coaches to consider. The staff is unhappy. They're unhappy mostly because of Sam Bowen. Sam Bowens and George Banks are the two people that dislike controlling people. Um, I can let Ernie Broglio go. No, I can't. I mean, I could, but I really need more personable people. And I don't have any more. I literally never got a pitching coach. There's literally nobody who will coach. What the shit. But all right. I think I'm gonna let both my first and third base coaches go. Uh, that's gonna solve part of my problem. And then I can pick some of my better coaches to take over. I do think Dallas Green is bench coach. Like, I want some continuity, and he's also easygoing. So let's go ahead and re-sign him. And let's go ahead and issue contract extensions here. And then Dick Scott isn't sure he wants to come back. That's fine. I'm not sure that I want you back. You can get fucked. Ryan Klesko, Javi Lopez. Man, I forgot how many catchers came out that were all just really good offensively. Um, Javi Lopez had himself quite a few seasons of really good performance offensively. I mean, honestly, he's kind of the underrated heart and soul. Well, I wouldn't say heart and soul. The heart and soul of the 90s Braves is Chipper Jones. I don't think anybody would dispute that. But Javi Lopez was a damn fine player in his own right. Damn fine. And I think Lopez made guys like Tom Glavin and John Smoltz and um, Steve Avery. Those guys pitch better. I know you're waiting for me to say, what about Greg Maddox? I don't remember when Greg Max started using Eddie Perez as his personal catcher, but I think it was fairly early on into his Braves tenure. Um, so yeah, Javi Lopez was a really good player for a long time. Um, and that's cool. Sean Green, I remember him. Damn good Dodger. Always hit really, really well. I'd forgotten he played for, played for Toronto in those early years. I just remembered him more as a Dodger. Look at that fucking 99, though. Ooh. That's some good baseballing right there. Good times. Didn't the real Guardians also draft Ryan Klesko, then they released him or traded him? There were a whole lot of players that played for Cleveland in the 90s that were blocked by Jim Tomey. So we had this this parade of good first basemen that ended up getting traded or sent to other teams for pitching that we could never quite find. Guys like Brian Giles, Richie Sexton. Um, I'm sure there's others. Those are the two that always stick out in my mind. Um, anyway, Chipper Jones of Philly just feels weird to me, but all right. That's the version of the baseball universe has proclaimed. Okay. So Jeffrey Hammonds is picking it up somewhat. He is still very badly flawed. 
And he's either got to get his shit together or he's got to go. Nice work by Alex Cole, though. Um, Alex Cole has settled in very nicely as our leadoff guy. Um, I'm pretty happy about that. I did not see Mike Matheny hitting 300 coming out of spring training. Like, I thought he might be okay. This is more than I expected, and I'm here for it. Even Marquise Grissom is providing some offensive punch. That's good. Um, pitching staff looks pretty good. Dave Veers is really struggling in the majors here. Let's switch you up. Let's get Steve Carse a bigger role in the eighth inning. In fact, you know what? Go to regular middle relief, and I'm going to promote Cal Eldred and make him my seventh inning setup guy. Like, Rob Dibble is still an issue, though. Rob Dibble just cannot seem to keep his ERA very low. Like, is he still an okay closer? Yes. But he's also asking for an awful lot of money that I don't think he's earned. Like, his peripherals are fine. He just gets hit for reasons that I, I just don't understand. I don't understand how a player of his caliber just keeps giving up base hits, but he does. Um, I don't care about his fielding stats. What makes you think I care about that? Yeah, he's getting creamed for a 370 by Babbitt. That's gross. If I look at his FIP, like, he's slightly better. Like, the defense might be hurting him a little bit, but he's not that bad. He is a fly ball pitcher. I'm wondering if Marquise Grissom is a good enough center fielder, perhaps. But it's also possible that Rob Dibble just isn't as good as he appears to be. I don't know. Um, I wouldn't mind locking up John Valentin right now if we can. If such a thing is possible. That is what I asked for. Um, here's the thing. John Valentin is a really freaking good player. And he's worth $5 million if he's, per, if he's producing at this level. What he's not worth is going to be $5 million towards the end of this contract. I'm going to go ahead and make this a five-year deal. I'm fine with the money. I'm not fine with being basically trapped. Um, I need the flexibility to move on from him if he does decline a bit, which is always possible. Okay. All right, you know what, buddy? Six years. He's getting paid an awful lot of money in the short term, but that's fine, I think. But I do want to get some cost certainty out of him. Do I even bring back Rob Dibble? Like, he's willing to come back for a pretty minor raise, which I appreciate. So let's see how he does a little bit later on this season. I'm expecting it's several Mariner All-Stars. Maybe not like hundreds, but definitely several.
Eric Hansen is the starting pitcher for the All-Star game. Rafael Palmero and John Valentin both made it. That's it? Only three players made it? From the Mariners, who are currently the best team in the major leagues. All right. I mean, to be fair... Like, we are a very, we are a team, not quite of stars and scrubs, but of stars and supporting players. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that, but it does mean you get fewer, it does mean you get fewer all-stars. That's fine. Uh, Juan Guzman is struggling a bit this season. Interesting. Very interesting. Okay. I mean, I would argue Mike Matheny maybe deserves an all-star appearance, but I'm not going to argue with Yvonne Rodriguez, who is legitimately playing amazingly. Um, so I get it. I get it. All right, let's go. Let us keep on keeping on. To the day of roster expansion. Uh, yes, Colin Ward offers me nothing of interest. All right. So a couple things to consider here. The pitching staff as presently constituted is fine. I don't necessarily trust them with, to make the playoffs if we make the playoffs. I don't trust them to go super deep. But what we have now is fine. I wish we had a better right fielder, though. Je Jeffrey Hammonds is alarming to me. And what I find so absolutely just weird is why he's playing this poorly. Like, yes, real-life Jeffrey Hammonds struggled mightily but that's because he wasn't getting regular playing time you've given me two and a half a season and a half of plate appearances and nothing you have shown me tells me this man deserves to be in the heart of your lineup however i also don't see that there's an easy way to get an upgrade at right field Not Bo Jackson. Like, Tony Gwynn is sort of an upgrade, but he's not the kind of presence I'd prefer to have. Yeah, see, I'm seeing an awful lot of players who aren't as good as Jeffrey Hammonds. Is there a starting pitcher I could grab? I get John Smiley. Eh. He's fine, I guess, but not really that exciting. Yeah, recent a really interesting scenario where I can't really find a quality right fielder. Now, I could trade Jerry Brown for a right fielder. Let's just see. Because I don't think he's as useful just rotting the pine. And maybe if I do shift Jeffrey Hammonds in more of a secondary role, he'll get a chance to thrive. Like, maybe we're just asking him for too much, right? So let's look for all types of player that happen to be right fielders. But I get Tony Gwynn, who doesn't solve my problem. I don't think Jack Clark does it either. Weirdly. It seems like I keep being offered Jack Clark, and I keep thinking, maybe, but what if? 
and I'm just never able to convince myself to pull the trigger. Probably because he's had some really rough years of late. I don't want Gerald Young. Nobody wants Gerald Young. But is the player I'm looking... Wow, Moises Alou looks like shit in this timeline. Okay. He was at least kind of good for, for a time. If I look at just the batters, I wonder if I can get a big time bat who doesn't play right field uh, and then move somebody around, but I don't think so. Oh boy, Dom Mattingly. I, where would I play him? Nowhere is where I would play. I'm not replacing uh, Rafi Palmero. Don't be feckin' stupid. Yep, that's the problem. I would have to hunt down a quality right fielder, and no one's going to give him to me for cheap. So I kind of have to ride or die with Jeffrey Hammonds, whether I want to or not, and hope that we can upgrade in the offseason. Because, like, literally for right now, I can't do anything with him. I can't replace him. There isn't anyone to replace him with. Now, just for the sake of argument... Show me, uh, if and you please, hitters that play right field. All I'm asking for is at least 60 contact and 60 power. Search. This is a pretty incredible list of players. Notice something. They're all really handsomely compensated. I can't get Gary Sheffield or Rusty Greer. That's fine. Or Garrett Anderson. I mean, I could try for Juan Gonzalez. The thing is that all these are either really great or really expensive players. Or both. Like, there's no way in hell the Mons give up many Ramirez, right? They'd be stupid. Eh. I'm trying to find a player that's in their 30s because I think they'll be more likely to be moved. David Justice would be a nice get. But I have a feeling, again... Yeah, that's the problem, right? Unless I can find, like, a grossly overplayed older player... Like an Eric, like even so, like you're not gonna give me Eric Davis. Nobody is. Even offering to say like Steve Traxel is just like a comically, it's not gonna happen. And so that's our issue. Uh, we're kind of trapped with who we have right now, and that's totally fine. Um, there are worse fates than to have Jeffrey Hammonds as your everyday starting right fielder. The problem is, of course, that. I, I, I need him to be better if he's going to stay on the team. Uh, Brian Harvey is a really good pitcher, and I have no desire to acquire him for Steve Traxel. I need a starting pitcher that can fill in in an emergency. I'm not saying I don't want him, but I'm saying I don't want to take it over... What if I discuss this trade and we drop Traxel? Is there anyone else you would take? You would take Pedro Castellano. Brian Harvey would be a pretty significant upgrade in the bullpen. Why not do it? I 
Now I can send Dave Veers to the miners, let him regain some of his, uh, his, what you call it, his confidence. And just a fucking Brian Harvey wreck shit by being a middle reliever that I use more often. No, you know what? You're the new eighth inning guy. And Cal Aldred and, and Steve Carsey can go back to being middle relief. What how much would it cost me to keep Harvey? Like, I know he's a free agent. I get that. But I'm wondering if... Oh, he's super grumpy because he didn't want to be traded from the Yankees. That's fine. Uh, he might change his tune by the end of the season. No, I'm not going to give you a contract extension necessarily. Okay, um, I'm willing to keep going with this current roster. And I'll decide what to do about Rob Dibble at the end of the season. I need to see how he improves over the season to see if he really is our man. Um, and I'm not convinced that he is. Okay, that's a fucking dick move game. You know that's a dick move, right? To injure motherfucking John Valentin at this point in the season. It's a broken hand too, which means the asshole got hit by a pitch. Um, when did that happen? July 15th. Today. Did he get hit by a pitch? Oh, uh, you're being weird again, game. Thank you. What the hell? I mean, Julio Franco playing second base for the rest of the season isn't the worst trade I can come up with. When did he actually get hurt? How did you break your hand running the bases? What the actual fuck? How, how do you do that? Did like, somebody like stomp on your hand? Like, holy shit. Uh, okay, well let's put him on the IL. I need a second baseman. I don't mind Julio Franco being that second baseman. Uh, he's hit quite well for us, but I really do need another player if that's the case. Yes, give me all pitchers that are good shortstops. What the fuck? Uh, go ahead and give me Mike uh, Gallego, I guess. I'll give him a major league contract. I just need him on the roster. How bad is Mark with the second baseman? Pretty bad. So Julio Franco is now the number two hitter. That might be the season right there. Um, his price tag is going up. I'm going to talk to you at the end of the season.
wonder if I could still get, uh, no, if starter tired, if starter tired, if starter tired. I don't need John Franco back, though, is the thing. I've got a reasonably good lefty, left-handed reliever, so I'm not that concerned about that. Quit asking me to take your left-handed relievers. I'm fine with what I've already got. Damn, Kevin Gross. Good job, my dude. Yeah, I'm not going to pay you that much money. Um, is there somebody we can acquire that would make a significant difference in our fortunes as a franchise? Not really. Um, for all of Bo Jackson's talent, He's the best bench player on this team. Yeah, I just see a whole lot of players here that don't impress me a huge amount. Yeah, there's just, there's not much here. So then the question then becomes, is there anybody that I don't want? Somebody I can safely trade without hurting the team. And the answer is, right now, not really. I am enraged at the injury to John Valentin. I truly am. Um, and if we weren't getting really great performances out of so many different players, I'd be annoyed as shit by it. I mean, I'm still pretty angry about it. Um, but I'll get over it. Maybe. Anything's possible. I like how Jerry Hammond's got worse in pretty much every way, but still improved his overall rating. That's kind of funny, actually. John Hope added a screwball. That's fun. Like, he literally can't strike anybody out, but he's an interesting enough pitcher that he might actually get a look at some point. Okay, I did not expect that we would be the buzzsaw this season. I truly didn't. Um, but that's exactly what we are. Um, we were the buzzsaw. Um, you pitched okay. I think you pitched well enough that I don't mind giving you an extension. So let's do it. Okay. 
Can you really stop injuring my players at the very end of the season? That's not cool, guys. Rod, you've actually been pretty terrible, all things considered. And Dick Scott's going to retire. Well, we made the playoffs. We won 101 games, which is really good. I think we can all agree that's a good season. The real question is, what do we do about Brian Harvey? I think we probably call up Dave Veers again because he is at least postseason roster eligible and Mike Trombley is not so that's what I'm gonna do um and I'm just gonna make you eighth inning and then we'll just do middle relief by committee for the rest of it we're also gonna go ahead and push Kevin Napoltz was my second best pitcher this season. Okay. Um... Let's check the playoff roster here. Definitely want Dave Veers on the roster. I'm gonna activate Dick Schofield early because I really want him playing. And this way, um, he should be available. This way, he'll be able to contribute in a positive way. Um, so instantly go ahead and slide in Schofield to play shortstop over Espinosa. And then just make Espinosa the number one backup. So what will effectively happen is that Espinosa will be the starting shortstop, but he'll be, uh, he'll essentially be ready if we need him. Okay. So remember, there is no division series at this point, um, cause there's only four teams in each league that make the playoffs. So we literally get to go right to the ALCS. Uh, and the Angels dominated us all season, so this is going to be an interesting test of wills for us here. Oh no, we are in the Division Series. I was looking at the wrong thing here. Yeah, this is correct. Um, Tired. Yeah, I will deal with Kevin Gross being our opening day starter for the postseason. We won, which is cool. Uh, they light up Juan Guzman, not unexpected. This man just, just gets hit this season. I don't get it. Uh-oh. Eric Hansen fucked up. And we needed a big one game from Eric Hansen and said he just got lit up by Kevin Moss? Really? Oh my gosh. Like, Barry Bonds beating my ass, I can live with, but Kevin Moss? Come on, guys. Be better. We got him locked up. 
And, yeah, we needed a great pitching performance, and we got a pretty good one, but we didn't get a great one. Damn. Our offense just utterly vanished, and I will tell you that I'm shocked, but I'm not. Without John Valentin, we needed someone to just play out of their mind, and Julio Franco did. But Rafael Palmero vanished. When the big moments came, he choked. And that basically ended our postseason right there. Um, so congratulations to the Angels. Uh, well done, etc., etc. Many happy returns. And I missed you, John Valentin. Desperately. Brian Harvey back. Are you willing to talk to me at all? You want a big raise. I can't give that to you. I can't afford to base got two closers. Hey, the Braves won the World Series in 94 this time. Instead of 95. Oh dear. Um... All right, let's do this one step at a time. Rafael Palmero, please come back. I will give you every cent I have. Just don't leave us, please. Uh, why not? Done. Jerry Brown, your contract is voided. Paul Molitor... You want to get paid a lot, I'm not going to pay you that much. I will bring back Dick Schofield. I think he is worth it. I didn't want Don Slot back, but that's all right. All right, so first things first, I want to promote Ed Halicki. Does anyone have a problem with people being temperamental? Is that an issue? Uh, only Dallas Green doesn't like temperamental people. Everyone else is basically neutral about it. So I'm gonna make you my first base coach. Um, now let's go ahead and hire a new third base coach. I'd love to get somebody that is probably personable. The problem is, is he struggles with people that are personable. So, but he's the only one that's there. So yeah, this actually seems like a good fit. Let's go ahead and offer a deal to Bob Hebner. Glenn Clark. And John Gamble. There we go. Let's talk about how the season went. What could have gone better and what could have gone worse. So, let's start with the obvious. In literally half a season, John Valentin accumulated 5-4. John Valentin would have won the MVP if he would have stayed healthy. I'm just throwing it out there. Uh, holy shit, was he an amazing player this season. And yes, he got a big raise, but did he deserve it? Yes. Rafael Palmero hit 58 home runs. That, my friends, is a lot of home runs. 
He walked more than he struck out. He was basically perfect. He's what we needed. I said we needed a big thumper, and we got one. And we're paying him a shit ton of money, and I don't care. Paul Molitor was a very, very useful player. A very useful indeed. But Mr. Molitor wants a pretty high raise, and while I'm not saying he doesn't deserve it, I am saying that I can't afford to pay it because a guy like Palmero is just more important to me. Jeffrey Hammonds didn't totally break out, but he did prove that he can be a reliable middle-of-the-order bat. So that's good. We needed Jeffrey Hammonds to come in and have a good year, and that's exactly what he gave us. Could he have done more? Absolutely. There's still more to his game. But I am pleased with what he provided. No, no notes there. Mike Matheny came in and was league average. And honestly, out of a catcher with his talent, league average is amazing. We got a lot out of Alex Cole. Um, we got a fair bit out of Julio Franco. I mean, Julio Franco literally pulled our asses out of the fire this season. When I needed somebody to step up and fill the hole left by John Valentin, Julio Franco did it like it weren't no thing. And I will forever be grateful about that. Jim Eisenreich is probably the offensive air we can probably most easily upgrade at because while he's a good hitter, all he does the hitter is pay to do is hit really well. And he doesn't hit really well. He hits well. But there's another level we could maybe have gotten here. Overall, the only player that was really disappointing was Marquise Grissom. And even then, it's not because of his bat. I think his defense is really stretched in center field. We might want to consider moving him to a corner. Because um, he almost cost us a full win with his defense. Not ideal, obviously. Um, so we're going to be replacing Paul Molitor, barring just our owner giving us a gigantic bag of cash. Like, I'm not going to pick Paul Molitor over Rafael Palmer. I'm just not. So everyone else is going to go there, pitching-wise. Eric Hansen was basically a Cy Young winner. In fact, I think he is quite literally going to be a Cy Young winner. He led the league in wins and strikeouts and led the league in war. If he doesn't win the American League Cy Young, I want to know who does. And I want to stab them in the face. I'm joking, but only a little bit. Uh, he was sensational. He is the reason we were as good as we were. But let us not ignore our other pitchers. Chris Na Nabholtz led the league in ERA, despite walking, like, every third batter. Atlee Hamaker, if the man could keep the ball in the fucking ballpark, he'd actually be a pretty good starter. But he can't. He is unable to do so. Juan Guzman also couldn't resist giving up home runs, and he's supposed to be a lot better than that. We're going to need a bounce back from Juan Guzman if we're going to be really successful next season. A lot of our bullpen was trash. I thought our bullpen would be a strength and it ended up being a weakness. Um, we just weren't getting big numbers out of anyone in the pen. Uh, this has to be addressed in the offseason somehow. Because, like, Steve Carr said, doesn't strike enough people out. Doesn't walk many people, doesn't strike enough people out. Okay. Brian Harvey was great for us. He actually had a very nice bounce back season with the Mariners. He's not coming back, though. Cal Eldred threw a whole lot of useful innings, including that one start that was a shutout. He's probably fine. Probably. Dave Veers, not very good. 
just not very good at all. He couldn't stop walking people. Ken Ryan, I don't know why I keep bringing him back. Um, he gives you some innings, but he's never very exciting. Uh, I need to invest in a really good secondary reliever if I can find one. Um, Ron Curry should never have faced a right-handed batter. That is not what he is here for. He also wasn't good against lefties either, so fair play. Fuck off, Ron Rod Scurry. And Tim Scott was just, yeah. I think a major bullpen upgrade would be very welcome at this point. I'm going to go ahead and offer Juan Guzman. A long-term deal? He's only given me four seasons, but they were all pretty good. Uh, I will offer Chris Nabholtz his contract there. Cal Eldred wanting a very minor increase, I am totally fine with. Uh, I am not giving you the rotation, though. Ken Ryan is just never... I mean, he's been better in the past. But he's always going to be like a mediocre pitch with mediocre stuff. I think he can go. I'm fine with giving Marquise Grissom another year to figure out his shit. I'm very fine with keeping Alex Cole. The question is, do I open up the checkbook for Juan Guzman? Now, I know the salaries are going to go up at an exponential rate, so locking him in at a relatively low rate does make some sense. So I think I'm going to go ahead and give him what he's asking for. Um, I'm definitely not going to do a lot better than Juan Guzman, and I think the thing is he has one issue, which is his control. That hasn't been the problem. Oh, has he just been grooving meatballs every now and again, which maybe he was. He's mostly done a good job of avoiding his one weakness. I wish he threw harder. Don't, don't mistake that. But he's been a very good pitcher who strikes out more than he walks. And that's an important fact in his uh, skill set. All these guys are leaving. Yeah, Molitor wants almost $5 million. I know he's a very good third baseman. I can't afford to pay him that much, though. I think that's a little bit out of my comfort zone. It means he's going to get hit number 3,000 with another team. That's what real Paul Molitor did, too, though. Uh, he was with Toronto when he got his 3,000th hit. It's fine. Uh, he's still going to be a Hall of Famer. He is still a great player, but I just can't afford to pay him that much money because of how much Rafael Palmero is getting. And if you think that Paul Molitor is more important to the Mariners than Rafael Palmero, um, you are silly. You're a silly person, and you should feel bad. A little bad. Do I bring back Julio Franco? I do not. Maybe if he could play third base... But the thing is that he can't, and I am going to need a new third baseman, so real talk. We're going to need a new third baseman. We're going to probably want a better center fielder sooner rather than later. I want at least one more starting pitcher, and I want two to three better relievers than we have right now. Whether that's because a guy like Dave Veers figures out his shit finally... Or because we acquire really good pitchers that just come in and dominate. Either way, we need more. But let's not bury the lead here. 101 and 61. Will John Valentin ever be this good again? Maybe, but I'm not counting on it. But he doesn't have to be. 
if we can get a really good lineup to support him and invest so- sensibly long term, I think we're going to be okay. I truly think we're going to be okay. But that is it for this season and this episode. Uh, We are currently at... Our fourth year in the Mariners. So next season will be the halfway point. No, well, obviously, we're already the greatest manager in Mariners history because we had a 1,000 winning percentage in our first real season. This actually, our, our, this actually doesn't count as our first full season. This is actually our fourth. Next season will be our fourth. And we just won 100 games, despite the fact that our very best player was injured for the last half of the season. We're going to go through some transition, and it's not going to be easy. But I think there's a path to us coming back to the playoffs next season. I truly believe that. We just turned in the best offense in the history of the Seattle Mariners. Um, And I'm really eager to see... Well, the best offense, actually, that I've ever produced. Interesting. I've never had a team score a 1,000 runs, but... I came the closest with this year... Very cool. Very cool. Anyway, my friends, I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you have, remember to like and comment down below. Uh, Subscribe if you would like to do so and catch new episodes of OTP every Monday and Friday. Until next time, however, this has been M. Guardian. Thank you for watching, and I bid you 